What's up, gang? This is Kenzar, Kenzilla, Gizzy, Camilla, and Villa, but I'm we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, you know, not much went down. We tongue out with Ilya. We did shit. Uh, we trained with Saber and Tosaka. Opened up our, op we opened up our circus or something like that. I don't know. And we talked with Archer. You know, last episode was pretty uneventful. But this episode, hold on. Let's see. We're going to see this shit. Hold on. February 8th, okay? Fate, day nine, Neo. This episode is called Neo. I don't know what the fuck that mean, but it's different, so it's a little scary. You feel me? Get into it. I'm dreaming. It must be because my blood is feverish and my entire body is throbbing. Something I'd rather not have to remember plays out in my dream. This is my oldest memory. It's also a memory I can't escape. It's a scene from 10 years ago, and one I usually try not to think back on. I can't ever erase it from my memory, though. It's not that I forgot. It's not that, it's not, it's not even that I want to forget. It's just that it's already happened. So it's not especially painful. And I don't really feel all that angry about it either. The past is the past. I can't return to it. I can't redo it. All that happened is that I escaped and lived on. Looking forward is all I can do. Nobody told me to do that, but I've thought about that, even if it's just vaguely, since I was a kid. I can't forget or deny the past. The only way to keep the memory of what we lost alive is to acknowledge it. That's some real shit. That is some real shit. It's hot. I wake up to find my body still burning up. I must have a, I must have wound up falling asleep out in the cool air last night. Inside this deadly lit shed with me and... Saber. <laughs> Saber? You've awoken, Shiro. I do not mind you sneaking away from your room, but I do not approve of you sleeping in a place like this. Oh, morning. Well, I, I was burning up last night. When I went outside, I got sleepy. I can see that. You do not have to explain yourself, but please do be careful next time. My master sleeping in such a place puts me in an awkward position. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to sleep in my own room next time. Lion ass. That would be very helpful, yes. By the way, Shiro, Tiger has been calling for you for a while now. Fujine? What she wants? It may be about breakfast. It is long past breakfast time. Huh? What? It's already past seven? Crap, overslept. Yes. It is quite unusual for you to be the last to wake up. Your training with Ren last night must have affected you rather a lot. Sebra provides a calm analysis of the situation. I don't got time for idle chit chat. I know you went out of your way to wake me, but go on back, go on back ahead of me. I'll hurry up and get changed and head to the kitchen. Hi. Very well. I will do what I can to calm Tiger down. Saber turns and heads back to the house. Calm Fujine. Saber sure has adapted well to our morning routine. I dash to the kitchen. I ignore Fujine's jeers and prepare breakfast as quickly as I can. Sorry to keep you waiting. There's not much time before school starts, so hurry up and eat. I plop breakfast on the table. What? Suddenly. What in the hell is this? Why are you mad? Fujine explodes, practically spitting fire. What is this? It's just toast! Shiro, why is this all there is for breakfast today? Hey, I overslept. I don't have time to make anything else. And a breakfast with toast is typically just that. It's just missing salad and eggs, which is not a huge difference. There's a big difference! Everyone else agrees, right? Fujine tries to appeal to Saber and Tosaka, who both eat in silence. This isn't going in her favor. Neither of them is as gluttonous as Fujine. She's barking up the wrong tree. 
She may be right. I'm not Miss Fujimura, but I don't know if I can tolerate such laziness. I can only assume you're insulting bread as a breakfast choice. Hey, wait a minute. I thought she didn't eat breakfast to begin with. Now why is she sign? Oh, disappointed. That's out of character. What? See? Everyone else thinks you're in the wrong. Majority rules here, so you best think on what you've done to make a proper breakfast for us. That's unfair. Besides, if I start making a dish now, you're going to be late, Fujine. It's already 7.30, so you know what to do the whole running out of the house with a piece of toast hanging out your mouth. Give it up! Fine, if I have to choose between being late or being hungry, I choose breakfast. That's nuts! What kind of teacher even are you? Just eat your toast and go to school. I refuse to make anything else, even if it kills me. Bitch! Jeez, you really do get worked up over nothing. Keep talking like an old man and you'll become one real quick. You don't need to remind me. Thanks to you, I'm practically an old man already. I huff and take a bite of toast. Okay, she might be right. There is something kind of sad about there being so many people here and them only having toast for breakfast. <laughs> well, nigga, we ain't got time for no big ass breakfast. Fuck your mother. The sounds of clashing Shenai echo through the dojo. Each bout goes essentially the same as they had the days before. Saber casually sweeps my desperate strikes aside and counterattacks far, far more effectively. I barely manage to block and continually strike back. Repost and I lose every time. My eyes hurt. Who trying to cash out me $30 for some blue light glasses? It'll make recording these videos a lot freaking easier. I stop, breathing heavily, shoulders heaving. Wiping sweat from my brow, I work to get my breathing under control. Why are you resting? You would not have given up so quickly yesterday. Come, attack me quickly. Oh, hold on. I need to catch my breath. A little break, please. This is so unlike you. If you will not attack, then I will come at you. You do not mind, do you? Saber stares down at her poor student. My body just won't listen no matter how she looks at me. What has gotten into you, Shiro? You were like a different person than you were these past days. What the fuck do you think? The magic training! The way you struck in me so fiercely and determined, determinedly amazed me. But today I feel nothing of that strength. I, I know that. I really do. I, I just can't do almost anything today. My situation has drastically changed since yesterday. Is your body still burning? That is no excuse for your movements becoming sluggish. You must cool your head and refresh your mindset. Well, before I do that, can you do something about that first? I point toward our audience standing by the wall. What? Don't mind me, just continue your training. Fuck off! I like privacy! Sosaka doesn't get it. I can't concentrate on fighting Saber with her staring at me like that. Is Rin a distraction? That is only further proof of your need for training. Very well then. I shall make it to where you uh, I shall make it so you don't need to worry about observers. Whoa, hold on, Saber! I still haven't caught my breath! That would not be an issue. Breathing is something you will simply adjust to during battle. Saber suddenly vanishes. Damn. The moment I realize I'm in danger and raise my shin out to guard my face, Saber strikes me right on the head. It was a rough morning. After getting knocked the fuck out, I stopped worrying about Tosaka watching. My focus went entirely to blocking Saber's attacks, and next thing I knew it was lunchtime. Seriously, you are so composed. Three hours of fighting Shiro and you aren't the least bit ruffled. You're usually pretty quiet, but you're much more so in battle. You're almost robotic. I'm not sure if it's because she enjoys seeing me getting knocked out, but Tosaka's in a good mood. The two are resting in the living room. As for me, I'm preparing lunch for myself as punishment for my lax approach to training this morning. Unbelievable. 
I want to just make something easy like cold salmon noodles. Robotic, you say? You may be correct. It is not something I have ever been conscious of, but perhaps I shut off my emotions while I wield a blade. My approach should not change whether in true battle or simple practice. Oh. What, is that, the mi is that a mindset you employ as a woman wielding a sword? Are you trying to use your mental state to compensate for your inferior physique? No, Rain. Maintaining one's composure is a key part of battle. It matters not whether you are man or woman. I believe you also shut off your emotions in battle, Rain. I know you are the type who can do so. You don't have to just blurt it out, you know. Well, it's true, but... But you and I are different. What I try to shut off is my tendency to be too soft. I don't, I don't see things in such logical abstract terms as you do. It appears that way, which is why you're so, which is why you're so showy and splendid. You are able to maintain your feminine grace even in battle. Are you being sarcastic? I can't come near, I can't come near you in terms of grace. I don't mind admitting it since Shiro's out of earshot, but I was amazed at how beautiful you are the first moment I saw you. Uh. I can hear you, Tosaka. You mistake me. If you see grace in me, then you are simply seeing the elegance associated with the Saber class, rather than my physical appearance. Don't fucking lie! Don't lie! Saber, do not lie! That's not true. I really thought that as a woman, I couldn't even begin to compete with you. I wouldn't have been so shocked otherwise. And that is where you are mistaken. I have never thought of myself as a woman and I have never been treated as one. I therefore cannot be so elegant as you seem to believe. Saber's words bring the conversation to an end. As I listen in, kitchen knife in hand, I find myself getting irritated by what Saber's saying. I've always wondered, what does she think she is? I chopped the chicken a bit harder than I need to. For some reason, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I have never thought of myself as a woman. Not that it has anything to do with me! I slam my knife down onto the cutting board as if it were a hammer. It doesn't help me feel any better. So this is today's task. I brought more than yesterday and it seemed like your body's calmed down. So you'll probably get it right this time. I have no idea how she carried them here, but Tosaka reveals about 40 lamps. I'm gonna step outside for a bit. I'll be back in a little while, so I expect you to be done by the time I'm back, bitch. I mean, why did I say that? Tosaka leaves her room. Alright. It's only been a night, but I hope I can succeed at least a couple times. <sighs> I think I got half done. I took, a, I took an hour to work on strengthening about 20 lamps. Half of them shattered and nothing at all happened to the other half. Of those that didn't change, maybe five looked like they'd been infused with magical energy. Now for the remaining 20. Hold on. Wouldn't five be enough for a test? All the lamps look to be antiques. I feel bad about breaking more of them. Yeah. Hold on. Is this a... It's not a romance option. Kato Saka. I should call Tosaka back. I shouldn't break any more lamps. Actually, I really shouldn't be talking big after breaking over 40 lamps. Oi, Tosaka. Hey, Tosaka! I call out to her, but there's no answer. That's weird. Did she step out of the house? Where else might Tosaka go? I'm hoping for a nice scene. Come on. Give me something good. There's someone in the shed. Sound like Tosaka and Saber are talking inside. Hey, Tosa! The instant I lift a hand to call out to her, a chill runs up my spine. I think it's because I can feel Tosaka's magical energy seeping from the shed, impulsive with enmity. 
What the? I immediately stopped calling for her. Even from here, I can tell Tosaka is agitated. But I can hear the two of them talking. Before I know it, I'm eavesdropping. What's up with him? Tosaka sounds both angry and nervous. Saber stands silently behind her. I don't believe it. Saber, did you know about this? No, I did not. I am a knight, not a mage. I only felt something was amiss. I do not I do not understand the situation as well as you, Rin. I see, then let me tell you. He's no mage. What do you mean by that? I mean what I said. Magecraft is ultimately equivalent exchange. No matter what kind of mystics you are talking about, all it does is take something from somewhere else and put it to use. But this is different. He's creating something from nothing. He's taking something that shouldn't exist and giving it shape. That is a concept encroaching on reality itself. His magecraft is nothing but a degraded version of it. I have no idea what Tosaka is talking about. But I definitely should have been listening in on the two of them. I walk away from the shed. I'll be lying to Tosaka, but I should go back to her room and pretend I was waiting for her to come back. Oh snap, it's two o'clock. No sign of Tosaka returning, so I just finished my, I focused on finishing my assignment. Oh, the phone's ringing. The ringing just re the ringing just reaches my ears from elsewhere in the house. It's in a living room. Tosaka can No, she won't dare pick up a phone in someone else's house. I doubt it's an important phone call, but I shouldn't ignore it. I stand up and head to the living room to answer the phone. There's nobody in the living room. Tabor and Tosaka must be in the courtyard. Hello, Emiya residence. That's Shinji. Hey there, Emiya. I hear you're not at school again today. Are you sick or something? All of a sudden, Shinji's voice sounds from the other end of the line, heavy with barely restrained laughter. Is that you, Shinji? What do you want? I don't think we have anything to talk about. Why the cold reception? I thought I'd call. And I thought I'd call you and tell you something. Tell me something. Yeah. There was something I wanted to tell you, but you haven't been to school. I don't want to drag this out, so I called. Couldn't wait any longer. Is... Tosaka around? Shinji sounds kind of odd. He seems weirdly excited. I can hear the other students in the background, so he must still be at school. It's a little past two. Fifth period should be over, so I think it's break time right now. Hey, are you listening, Emiya? Is Tosaka there or not? Not right now, she just stepped away. Okay, great. I only wanted to talk to you. I'm going to tell you something real good, so why don't you come to school right now? Or come without telling Tosaka, obviously. I don't know how to respond to that. Shinji's acting weird and we're already talking. I don't see any reason to go all the way to school, and if I take off without telling Tosaka, it feel like a betrayal. Sorry, but I can't go to school. If you have something for me, you don't have to wait till, till next week. I'll go back to school after the weekend. Huh? Who put you in charge? And that'll be too late. I just said I can't wait any longer. Shinji's yelling now. He must be really excited because I can hear his heavy breathing over the phone. So you're finally using your head. Yeah, you're right. There's no way you would come on your own at this point. The whole conversation's pretty suspicious, so of course you'd think it was bad news. His tone shifts entirely and even starts laughing. Hold on a minute. Calm down. You're acting real strange, Shinji. I don't know what happened, but... Don't lie, Emiya. Knowing Tosaka, I bet she told you everything. You don't need to hide it from me. Yeah, you're Saber's master. After all, that means you're much, much more of a murderer than I am. Shinji seems to be enjoying himself. 
I've known him for about five years, but I've never seen him so wound up. Shinji, Shinji are you? Just come to school, okay? And hurry, Emiya. You should be able to make it by six period. It's Fujimura's class anyway, so you won't get in trouble for being a bit late. Even Fujinae would get mad if I were late to her class. And I might get even more of an earful if I only showed up for six period rather than just missing the whole day. That's your own fault. Oh. And if you tell Tosaka, I'm ending our friendship for real. I turned the whole blind eye to the Sakura thing. But you can at least fulfill your obligations as a friend in the end, right? Our conversation ends there. All I hear is the buzzing electronic tone from the receiver. What's with him? What should I do? Tosaka should be in the house, but I don't see her anywhere. And if I go to school, I can't bring Saber. But then if I don't do what Shinji asks, I'm worried what he might do. He's probably agitated because of that merciless rejection Sosaka gave him yesterday. If I ignore him, he might get violent with Sakura again. Well, it's still bright out, so it shouldn't be an issue. I should hurry now that I've made a decision. If I hurry, I should be able to make it by six period. Shiro, why are you so stupid? Shiro, we're gonna die! Oh my goodness! Kobe, I'm killing myself. There's nobody at the school gate. From the outside, it looks like the school is deserted since class is in session. Maybe there's no physical education class either since there's nobody in the courtyard. Well, that's gonna change in a few minutes. When six periods over, school is out. The campus and the campus and exit will be overflowing with people on their way out. I head up to the third floor. There's nobody in the hallway either. Everyone wants to be in their classroom, so I feel a little awkward walking into class C. Well, it's not like I'm going to be completely conspicuous, so I should hurry up to the classroom. Class C's down the hall. Right now, I'm in front of class H, which is the closest to the stairs. So there are five classrooms between me and my destination. Oh, hell no. A wave of dizziness slams into me. My entire body is also overcome with nausea. My stomach churns. My senses are going completely haywire. Red floods my vision, as if blood were seeping into my eyes. The temperature around me hasn't changed and my body is suddenly unbearably hot. What the hell is this? I stumble. Strength leaves my body. I feel like I'm withering and I can't do anything to stop it. In the same way, you can't stop sand from falling in an hourglass. I'm suffocating. My throat burns. Was all the air sucked from the hallway? From the entire school? I sway and by accident stagger toward a window. Desperate for air, I jerk it open. I freeze. This is so unbelievable that I can't even find the wherewithal to get confused. Outside the window, the entire campus is, is a field of endless red. It looks like the school was carved out of the world and plunged into a sea of red. The school's building looks like an altar draped in a red canopy. And then finally, I realize what's happening. I move away from the window. I muster up what sense I have left and force my feet to move, heading into the classroom closest to me. Inside, not a single student is seated in any of the chairs. They're all lying on the floor. Even the teacher is on the floor behind the podium. They're still breathing. Everyone is convulsing as if pleading for help. Nobody is dead yet. The students don't have the strength to get up. They're just waiting to rot away, seeing their miserable state on the floor. Brings to mind the burning ruins from that day. The nausea intensifies, but I can still get a handle of the situation. I take a look at the students on the floor. It's difficult, but we can breathe. They're not dead. If I hurry and get help, there may be a chance to save them. But the moment I check the face of a student nearby, something clicks inside my head. 
Their skin is hard as wax. Not everyone is like this. It varies from person to person, but the most severely weakened student's blood seems to have coagulated around their joints, oily and glistening. Stiff, motionless arms, fixed, staring eyes, just like wax figures. I know this. I recognize this scene. Stop. This is just a hellscape. I know this sight well. I said stop. All that's sustaining me now is anger that has completely eclipsed any fear. My left arm tingles. The command spells on the back of my hand is warning me that an enemy is nearby. I run though my breathing is heavy and labored. I've long since lost my mind. Yo, Emiya! Glad to see you're doing better than I expected. So, what do you think of this? At the end of the hallway, Shinji Mato is standing in front of Class C. My arm throbs. My command spells are screaming at me, telling me the boy just ahead caused all this. I fucking knew it! So this is all you're doing, Shinji? I can't breathe properly, but I glare at Shinji who's keeping his distance. He must really like what he's seeing. Because the next thing I know, Shinji throws his arms wide and starts cackling in a blood red hallway. Of course it is. I knew as soon as you arrived, so I triggered the bounded field. It wasn't easy to time it just right, you know. If I did it too early, you'd run away. If I did it too late, we would have to face each other. I wanted to see the look on your face myself, so I didn't want to make it too simple. So you were lying about having something to discuss. Discuss? Actually, we're just about to start that part. I need to show Tosaka how much better I am than you. And I should apologize for lying to you as well. See? I didn't tell you I was the one who put up the bounded field over the school. Shinji laughs like it's the funniest thing ever. That. I guess I've learned never to trust him. Hey, you don't look as surprised as I thought you- as I thought- as I'd have, You don't look as surprised as I'd have thought. So when I told you the bounded field wasn't mine, you didn't believe me. Oh, this is too good. So sometimes even you don't trust people. Shinji's merry laughter bores into my skull like a drill. I have to point out I'm plenty surprised. I just have been bracing myself to learn who set up the bounded field, Shinji or the other master. That was all. But I'm so much for my opti- but so much for my optimism. I should have settled things with Shinji the moment I learned he was a master. This is all my fault. Shinji! Why did you do this? Were you lying about having no intention of fighting too? Well, I think that was the truth. I had no intention of activating this. It was really just a negotiation tool. If I set a bomb, Tosaka would think twice about attacking me, and I'd have an ace up my sleeve in case something happened. I see. But Tosaka said it would take more than a few days to activate the bounded field. Does that mean she miscalculated? She would say that. But you know, the bounded field may not be complete, but it's already formed. Activating it is no problem. Okay, I admit that does make it less effective. At this point, it might take a few more minutes to kill anyone. Stop it. The nausea is long since gone. That one thing all is all I can think to say to Shinji right now. Stop it. Stop what? You're telling me to stop this bounded field, are you? I can't waste a perfectly good bounded field by stopping it after it's already been activated. I said stop it. Do you have any idea what you've done? You're pissing me off. You think you can order me around? Besides, this is my power. I'm the one who decides whether I stop it or not. And if you really want me to stop it, the least you can do is get on your knees and bed. Honestly, you and Fujimura both need to learn your place. I need, I need, I need water. Learn my place, I'll beat the fuck out your ugly ass nigga. Fuck you pussy.
fucking hate this nigga, bro. Hey, what about Fujine? Huh? Oh, Fujimura. She managed to squirm around even after the bounty field activated. Everyone was dropping like flies, but there she was, still wobbling around. So she hobbled over to me since I was still standing. Had the nerve to tell me to call an ambulance. Unbelievable, right? Playing the model teacher and all that? Of course I'm not gonna do something like that. Don't want to. But Fujimura kept clinging to me, which really pissed me off. But when I kicked her, she stopped moving. <laughs> we're gonna kill this nigga, bro. Like, we're, if, if, like, if I have the option to kill this nigga, I'm killing this nigga. She'll probably die first. I feel a switch flipping inside me. Sasaka so says something about pressing a switch in my head. But it's nothing like that. There's this echoing clang in my head. A firing hammer strikes inside my head, and the inside of my body suddenly switches over. This is your last warning. Stop the bounded field, Shinji. You really don't get it, do you? The more you try ordering me around, the less I want to listen. If you don't like what I'm doing, then you better try to stop me yourself, Emiya. Got it. Then it's really simple. All I have to do, I need to stop him so I can stop the bounded field. Something surges inside me. Fiery heat blooms to my whole body. There's no more than 20 meters between me and Shinji. It should take only an instant. My body is surging with vitality, much more than when I activate my magic circuits. You really are an idiot! A shadow wavers. The dark shape waiting in the corner of the hallway begins to take shape and move. A hard, sharp edge makes of darkness itself. It's like a guillotine ready to cleave anything that approaches Shinji in two. I don't know what kind of magecraft it is. Three shadows emerge. If that's all there is, I... I can't do this. Hold on. I kind of want to see. I don't need to stop. This is not going to go well. No, I can't stop. Not now. No matter how strong it may be, if it doesn't hit me, it won't matter. The three blades come at me like a blast of wind. You're an idiot, Shinji. This attack is nothing compared to Saber's. Oh, it worked out. I pass through the gaps of the three overlapping shadows. I don't feel any danger from the shadows. There's no problem then. Saber taught me that I shouldn't hesitate as long as I don't sense that the attack will be fatal. Shinji! Shinji! I close in on him. He has no shadows protecting him. Just a few more steps, maybe three more meters and I can... Stop! Don't come near me! Shinji turns and runs. The moment I reach out to grab his back, I feel a chill run through my entire body and I quickly jerk my arm back. Rider, something cuts through the air. A black blade slices through the space I've been occupying in just an instant before. I stop. I don't know where she came from, but standing in front of me now, I see the woman dressed in ominous bl black, so dark even the most venomous shade of crimson seems to pale in comparison. My mind goes blank with fear. I'm going to die. I don't want to think about it, but the image of my own brutal death fills my head. I sense it. I sense only death. The shadows were nothing like this. Good, Ryder. D don't hold back. You can do whatever you want with him. Ryder's form blurs. I need to. I don't need to do this, what? This isn't gonna be a battle. You need to call Saber. I retreat immediately. This isn't a good time to fight. I need to regroup and make Shinji stop the bounded field. Of course. I'm not sure what happened, but I retreat desperately. Fear makes everything in front of me appear completely white. I don't even know what I'm so terrified of. Without thinking, I throw out an arm to cover my neck. 
Something sharp bears itself in my arm. The dull sound of scraping bone tells me the next attack will end me. I run. I can't afford to look back. I just cover my vital spots with my hands as best as I can in a frantic retreat. The sharp edge slowly saws through my body with a horrible jarring sound. Spray my own blood blocks my off my vision, meanwhile. That's hard as fuck, by the way. Ryder's rushing towards me so quickly that I can't even see her. With each cut, I hear sounds I can't even recognize coming from my own mouth. But I continue my desperate retreat, somehow surviving a dozen of fatal blows striking at me. What? Is this actually going well? I don't know what I'm doing. Ryder's dagger is buried in my arm. My clothes are tattered and torn and my flesh is brutally shredded. But I'm still able to shield myself with my own body, blocking the attack aimed at my neck and head. Call Saber! This isn't a conscious thing at all anymore. Pure instinct drives my reactions as I desperately try to survive Ryder's attacks. My breathing is labored. I'm only running, rushed along by the imminent danger looming over me. Eventually, whatever strength I have left will fade and she'll catch up to me, then I'm dead. That's what Saber had been trying to tell me. Don't fight against a servant. Fight wouldn't even be the right word for it. She told me again and again. So why the hell am I in a position now? In this position now? All I want to do is catch Shinji as fast as possible to make him shut off the damn bounded field. What the hell am I doing? What are you doing, Ryder? That's enough. Just end this already. He can't do anything anyway. Shinji is elated, his voice triumphant. Ryder nods and swings her dagger up in a wide arc. She's striking at my head. I can't dodge. All I can really do is try to prevent her from hitting anything vital. The dagger stabs into my shoulder right below my collarbone. I hear a high-pitched metallic sound then the click of a tongue. What the? The end of Ryder's dagger is starting to disintegrate. This is a surprise. I cannot kill you with my blade. Ryder stops. In that instant, I frantically try to come up with a way to leverage this sudden opportunity. Then gravity shall kill you. Something strikes me with all, with the, with all the force of a sledgehammer, then I go flying out the window. It had only been a kick to the stomach, but I go flying, shattering the window. We're on the third floor. Let alone I'll die of blood loss anyway, so a fall from this height will be enough to finish me off. I mean, an ordinary human will be dead on the spot from a blow strong enough to send them, to send them flying like this anyway. I reach out. Maybe I'm not falling yet, or maybe I'm just hallucinating right before I die. But my body is still suspended in midair. How? I reach out, desperately grasping for something, anything. The sky is crimson. The school is pulsating like a creature's stomach. And am I... Am I just going to die? Let something like this happen? Let... Let this... Let this happen? Am I going to let this happen with... Am I going to let myself die without saving so much as a single person? I can't. I grit my teeth furiously. I can't win. This is not even a battle. I knew that going in, but I still screwed it up. There's no more pain. All I fear is my sheer rage making my insides unravel. I thought I could do it alone. This is what I get for saying I won't let Saber fight. I was an idiot. I can't save anyone on my own. If I really wanted to end this war, there was one thing I should have done from the right from the start. He asked me whether or not I was going to, whether I was, whether I was really not going to fight, not kill and not let anyone kill. If I realize my mistake, I should first decide what to fix and decide who to punish. And then I see it there on my arm, still reaching up as if to touch the heavens. My command spell is waiting for an order. I need Saber to come save me. I call for help. Hanging between earth and sky, my thoughts swirl as time seems to vanish and I wish upon my command spell. One second before impact. Logically, there's no chance of me surviving this, but I still hope Saber can defy that simple reality. 
Please! Come to me, Saber! I muster up all my strength and call for my blade. One of my command spell strokes disappears. At that very moment, the space around me begins to waver. So this is magic. Saber, clad in her silver armor, bursts through the ripples in space and time to appear before me. Master! Master! The girl in the silver armor rushes toward me. Saber suddenly appears in the schoolyard, and before she can assess the situation, she recognizes me falling at full speed. She catches me right before I slam down into the ground. Thanks, Saber. You saved me. I'm still bloody, but I managed to stand on ground. I may have avoided getting slammed to the ground, but my body that's been slashed numerous times has already passed its limit. But there's no time staying down, forcing my numb limbs to move. I push myself to my feet and show her that I'm all right. There's no time to explain. You understand what's happening, right, Saber? Please wait, Shiro. I do understand, but first, your body must take care of Ryder. Only you can beat her. I cannot. Treating you is my first priority. You will not survive these runes. No. There's something else that needs, that needs doing first. We need to beat Shinji and Ryder as quickly as possible. Nothing is more important. But if I do that, Saber's focused only on me. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy about that. But there's no time to argue. If Saber doesn't want to listen, I just need to use my second command spell. She must have understood my resolve. Saber reluctantly accepts my decision. Understood, Master. Your orders. Defeat Ryder. I'll handle Shinji. Saber does not hesitate. She nods and without another word, turns toward the school building like a whirlwind. I run up the stairs. Ryder and Shinji are on the third floor. I can tell Shinji's still on the third floor because of the way my command spells are reacting. The moment I set foot on the third floor, sparks fly. Is that Ryder? I couldn't see, but Saber must have parried Ryder's attempt at a sneak attack from above. Shiro, I will defeat Ryder. Please take care of Ryder's master. She doesn't need to tell me. Saber can't possibly lose to Ryder. She won't. I'm absolutely sure after what little I was, I was able to learn of Ryder's abilities during my brief fight with her. Saber's abilities vastly exceed Ryder's. I'm leaving her up to you, but try not to go too far. It'll be over once I stop Shinji. I run right past Saber. That same instant, Ryder flings a dagger at me with mur murderous intent, but Saber rushes in to deflect the attack. I run down the hallway. I'm coming for you, bitch! Come get fucked up, nigga! I'm up a honey pack and I'm a vengeance, nigga! Ahead, I see a bewildered Shinji. Guess I'll be at a, van at a disadvantage if I go out, I'm empty handed. I'll need a weapon. It should be long, like a mop leaning against the locker there. Trace on! I pass magical energy through my body as I run. Maybe I'm not distracted, or maybe I just can't afford to think of anything else. I manage to strengthen the plastic mop as effortlessly as breathing. The shadows begin forming again. I'm badly injured, but I don't feel the least bit sluggish. More than that, I have a weapon now. That means... Fuck out of here! I don't even need to dodge. I use the mop to smack aside each shadow as it flies towards me. The mop breaks, but I expected as much from something done so hastily. Besides, I don't need it anymore. I'm so close. Shinji! Shinji! Bitch! I lash out with a furious punch. The impact jars my arm, which is still practically cut to ribbons, so painfully that I nearly pass out. I punch Shinji in the stomach, and then grab him and shove him against the wall. You! Shinji tries to shove my hand away. Without missing a beat, I kick, it, I kick his grasping arm. I can't even control myself right now. I slam the arm I kicked against the wall and break it. 
I don't even hear Shinji screams. This is bad. If I don't focus, it might be me who faints. I should hurry while I can still move. I grab Shinji's hair and smash him against the wall. Scream later. Release the bounded field, Shinji. Th the hell I will. Who are you to tell me? I grab Shinji by the throat with the arm I can still control. Blood pours from my arm. It seeps through my clothes and it drips onto Shinji's body, staining him. If you won't shut the bounded field, then I'll just have to kill you. I don't care which it is, so pick one now. I squeeze. It must be the other magical energy coursing through my body. I could snap his neck like a twig. You're bluffing. Y you wouldn't do something like that. Besides, I haven't killed anyone yet. I was just borrowing a little bit of life from everyone. Okay then. Bye, Shinji. I squeeze harder. There's no hesitation. Maybe a little sympathy. I feel bad that as a fellow mage, Shinji was never taught the rules of being a mage and so didn't have any problems killing innocents. Wait, hold up, you beat me, Yemiya. I'll stop the bounded field, I promise. I loosen my grip around his throat. Damn, you're crazy strong. Hey, Ryder, stop your blood for it. Your master's life's in danger. There's no response from Ryder. But hearing Shinji, Saber takes a step back from Ryder. Ryder lowers her dagger. I see her mouth move. This is what you want, right? I hear this bounded field is special. Because it's hard to reconstruct another one in the same place. So there won't be another bounded field here again. Now take your damn hands off me. That's not how this works. I won. So you do what I say. Shinji, get rid of your command spells. Then we'll never have to fight again. What? That's ridiculous. I'm not doing that. If I get rid of my command spells, I won't be able to control Ryder. If that happens, I... You won't be a master anymore. Then you go to the church in Shinto. I hear they protect masters who drop out of the war. Or is it something else? Were you lying when you said you made a bounded field to protect yourself? I... I didn't say that. I just thought if I became a master and controlled a servant, he thought he could be a mage. But what's the point of becoming one? It's over, Shinji. If you're not going to get rid of your command spells, I'll just have to cut them out. Cut them out? Shinji tilts his head in genuine wonderment. This isn't an act. Shinji really doesn't know what I'm talking about. Well, you see. Shiro, get back! I hear Saber shout. Maybe you saw the training at the dojo, but my body reacts to Saber's words before my brain processes them. I let go of Shinji and jump back. At the moment, Ryder's dagger swings to the spot I'd been standing in a heartbeat before. Step back, Master. We are retreating. Shiro, please step back. Ryder intends to unleash all the magical energy she used to maintain the bounded field. What? Unleash the magical energy? I look toward Ryder. She does seem odd. The way she just appeared here when she had been confronting Saber a second ago. The cold air emanating from her. Everything about her is suddenly far more intimidating than she, than it, than she has ever been. Ryder, what the hell are you thinking? You can't even beat Emmy a servant. Why are you taking the reins? Correct. I am no match for Saber. However, please be assured. My noble phantasm is greater than any of the other servants. No matter the opponent, they cannot match my agility. Ryder raises her dagger. Everyone gasps in surprise. For some reason, Ryder presses the dagger to her neck and... Slashes her own throat. Red sprays everywhere. Blood gushes from the black clad Ryder's pale neck. Ryder is just as surprised as the rest of us. No matter how extraordinary servants may be, a slashed throat is fatal. Ryder will bleed out and disappear on her own.
The splattered blood stops midair and slowly forms into a circle. A magic circle drawn in blood. It's a pattern I've never seen before. That design resembles a creature, an ominous creature. Is that a spider? Right has created a lump of magical energy. The bounded field from earlier seems like child's play compared to this magic circle. What? I'm being pushed back! This must truly be a massive amount of magical energy. I'm being pushed back as if by a strong wind. Shiro, get away! Ryder intends to use a noble phantasm! If you don't move, you'll be caught in it! Saber grabs me and jerks me back. She faces down Ryder in her, mag in her magic circle as she protects me. Do you intend to run, Ryder? If you're going to drag your master into this, I need only to defeat you here. I will not allow you to use your noble phantasm. Of course not. A servant's duty is to protect their master. I am just taking master and running. If you do not like that, come after us, Saber. If, that is, you still have the will to fight after seeing this. A throbbing sound pulses through the school. With the sound of rending flesh, Ryder's hair whirls around her. Shiro, get down! Saber tugs my hand and drags me to the ground. There's a roar and then a flash. I close my eyes against the raging wind. But even with my eyes closed, I still feel its intensity. Something white streaks by. A huge bolt of light strikes down the hallway at tremendous speed. All I see before me is dreadful destruction. Shinji and Ryder are gone. The bolt of light wasn't after us. It was probably a means of escape. My wounds hurt. I feel a hammering in my head again. The heat flowing through my body quickly fades. I don't hear Saber's question. My vision goes blank white. I'm having that dream. Maybe this is what death looks like to me. The closer I get to death, the more I keep seeing these images I don't want to see. I see motionless bodies crumbling and disappearing. The moment when everyone desperately sought help, but none came. That was painful. It was so terrible it hurt even to live. And I thought maybe just disappearing would put me out of that misery. Dazed, I reached my hand out, but not because I wanted help. I just thought the sky was so far away. That was my final thought, I think. And then I lost consciousness and my outstretched hand fell to the ground, or rather, it should've. A large hand grasps the smaller one as it falls. He rushed into the fire to save somebody and found me. I remember that face. I remember the tears pooling in his eyes, how overjoyed he was to have found a living human being. He looked so happy. It seemed like he was, it almost, it seemed almost like he was the one being saved, not me. And then, he actually looked envious of me, who was on the brink of death. He even looked grateful for something as he rescued a, a strange, rescued the strange child. My foot's falling asleep. It was a turning point in my life. The weakness I showed in accepting death became a strength, a desire to live. My mind, which had practically gone blank, was filled with the joy of being saved in that moment. I tried moving my fingers with the strength I had left as so not to let go of that man's hand. Then I finally passed out. The next thing I knew I was in the hospital and the man who saved me had come to visit. That was 10 years ago. From then on, all I ever did was follow in Kiritsugu's footsteps. The only thing I could ever think of was being like him. It's not because he saved me. I couldn't shake the image of his face back then, and I tried to become the same thing. I've been striving for that ever since. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I dreamed I wouldn't notice. That's right, that I would one day. I held to the hope that one day, 
I held to the hope, the dream that one day I too would be saved if I could smile like Kiritsugu did back then. When I open my eyes, I'm in my living room. The ticking of the clock is awfully loud. Looks like I'm sleeping on the floor. When I raise my arms, I notice the bandage is wrapped tightly around both of them. I hope this teaches his dumb ass to never do that stupid ass shit again, bro. But hold on, before we go. I noticed I didn't get a heart in this part, so I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna get the heart. I'm gonna go back and get the heart. Please come. I murmur those words like a prayer. My life doesn't matter anymore. But to put a stop to this savage brutality. No. Come, Saber! I must up all my strength and call for my blade. One of my command spell strokes disappear. At that very moment, the space around me begins to waver. So this is magic. Saber clad in her silver armor bursts with the ripples in space and time to appear before me. My back slams into the ground. I stop breathing. The force of impact jars every bone and organ of my body. Several ribs crack or probably break outright. And yet, my body is intact. My bloody arms are still attract attached. Saber runs to me. Forcing my numb limbs to move, I push my feet to shore that I'm alright. No time to explain. You understand what's happening, right, Saber? Wait, sure, I do not understand, but first your body must take care of Ryder. Only you can beat her. I cannot. Treating you is my first priority. You will not survive these wounds. No, there's something else that needs doing first. We must beat Shinji and Ryder as quickly as possible. Nothing is more important. But if I do that, Saber's focused only on me. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy about that, but there's no time to argue. I'll just have to use my second command spell if she doesn't listen. Since she must have understood my resolve, accept my decision. I'll handle Shinji. Alright, it's about the same as before. Or not. Saber does not hesitate. She nods and without another word, turns towards the school building like a whirlwind. Ah, uh, yeah, skip all that. When I open my eyes, I'm in my living room. The ticking of the clock is awfully loud. Looks like I've been sl sleeping on the floor. When I raise my arms, I notice the bandage is wrapped tightly around both of them. It's dark out. I sit up. According to the clock, it's 10 at night. Don't just say it's dark out like nothing happened, you ingrate. Can't you think of something better to say the moment you wake up? Tosaka, you're here. No, that's not it either. Is that the attitude you should be taking when I've been at your side nursing you this whole time? I didn't know that. That's ungrateful of me. Sorry, my brain's a little wonky. I can't really think straight, but thanks. I guess I owe you one, again. Well, it was nothing. You were in pretty bad shape, so I don't blame you for still being a little hazy. So, does anything hurt? I think all your external injuries have healed up, but I don't know about anything internal. If there's anything wrong still, we need, we need to treat it. No, I just feel dull. Nothing's hurting. It's just that I feel like I'm floating. I don't know how I ended up here. I don't remember what I did today. Oh, right. Tosaka, how's the school? What happened to me after that? It's okay. Don't worry about the others. Kirei went to the follow-up at the school. He'll handle all the repairs for the hallways and everything else. You don't have to worry about any of that. He's a priest, so we should do that much or risk the wrath of God. He's doing that? So that means the school's... It didn't become a major crisis. A lot of students were taken to the hospital, but none of their conditions seemed to be life-threatening. They're being treated for malnutrition, and most will only have to spend two or three days at the hospital. 
Okay. That's... That's a relief. Resolving the bounded field took longer than expected, but I wasn't too late. The instant I relax, every last bit of strength floods out of me. I breathe out deeply and lean back against the wall. Does that mean Kodamine healed me too? I don't think even you would be able to heal so many wounds. What are you talking about? You healed them yourself. It was the same thing. It was the same as the thing with Berserker. The way you heal your wounds is nearly miraculous. You really don't remember? No, I don't know why myself. I was normal until I formed a contract with Saber. Is that so? Then maybe you're just descended from lizards or something. How can you say something like that with a straight face? This is weird for me too, you know? It's like my body isn't my own. I think it's fine. Whatever the cause, your condition is why you survived. That's twice now. Turning into a lizard would be a fair compromise at this point. Are you enjoying teasing the critically injured guy, Tosaka? You were critically injured. Well, anyway, you should thank Saber too. I'm not sure how or why, but it's all thanks to Saber that you're like this. Oh. My brain finally starts working. There's something I need to do. I need her. I needed her. I called her so she came and she saved me. I need to tell her something right away. I stand up too quickly. Pain shoots through my body as I move, but I can't let that stop me. Tosaka, where's Saber? She's in the dojo. I'm gonna go get something from my room. Tosaka heads over to the outbuilding. My joints creak with pain. I grit my teeth and try to endure it as I head toward the dojo. Oh, by the way, sorry if me going back to get to the other scene kind of throws off the flow of everything. Honestly, I didn't really want to do it either because I really, I really liked the how it was flowing and I knew like going back would kind of mess up the flow. But like, I am trying to, I, am, I like, I already know what ride I'm trying to go down, you know? I already know, like, I'm trying to get the best ending. So I'm trying to get all the... Trying to get all the relationship points that I can. So I was like, let me just go on and do that. I reached the dojo. Saber is sitting in Saiza style, as if she's meditating. Shiro, you've woken. Saber notices me coming in and hurries to her feet and rushes over to me. Sorry for worrying you. I only just came to and Saber. Do not dare sorry me now. There are many things I must say to you. You accepted an invitation from the enemy and left me. You tried to fight on your own and you did not spare an ounce of consideration for your body. Do you understand that any of those foolish decisions could have been fatal? You very nearly did die. Do you enjoy tormenting me like this? Uh, no, I... What is it? I will not be moved by any facile excuses you might attempt to make for yourself. Today is the day I will hear precisely what is on that mind of yours. Saber comes at me with all the rage and force of a hurricane. She's so intense, I'm not sure how to explain it. But I'm kind of enjoying Saber being so emotional. I know. Let me explain myself. Let's talk, Saber. As you can see, I've healed. Shiro, are you alright? Yeah, looks like it. I'm alive for now. I see. That is a relief. What did that, what did that angry look from a few seconds ago go? Saber heaves a relieved sigh and smiles softly as if celebrating my recovery. It helps me understand that even Saber, stoic as she always is, is acting like this because of how much, she, how much I worried her. I wasn't relying on Saber, but she still accepted me as someone to fight alongside. How stupid of me. I hadn't realized the extent to which she trusted me, and I couldn't extend the most basic trust of just letting her fight. Saber. I speak up more comfortably now. I'm finally able to look her in the eye and it feels natural. Yes. What is it, Shiro? Sorry, I was an idiot. I bow my head. 
What? Please, lift your head, Shiro. I was only employing a figure of speech earlier. Yes, I was angry, but there was no need for you to- There was no call for you to apologize. Of course I do. I'm your partner, and I owe you an apology. I'm sorry I worried you. As long as I'm with you, I'll never fight alone. Are you? Yes, Saber. Please, lend me your strength. I can't beat the other masters on my own. I need your help. Are you admitting that you were mistaken earlier? Are you accepting that, as a master, you would devote yourself to a support role and will leave the fighting to me from now on? Well, I still don't want to see Saber hurt. That's why I forbid her from fighting. And that's where I was wrong. Ever since I decided to fight with her, I should have just put everything I had into helping her. No, I don't think I was mistaken. If you're going to protect me, I'm going to protect you. I can't let you fight alone. Saber doesn't answer. The mood in the dojo turns frosty. I just can't let this go. I lift my head thinking I'll have to beg until she accepts my determination. But then... You are too stubborn to change, aren't you? Saber. There is no need to respond, is there? I am your blade. Who but I can be the one to help you, Shiro? Saber extends her left hand. I can't think of anything sensible to say, so I shake her hand. Our handshake forms something almost tangible. It's been a few days since we first met, but it feels like we finally formed a real contract. What's going on? Why are you two shaking hands? Way to fuck up the mood, Tosaka! Damn! Hey. Why would she show up now of all times? Saber and I quickly let go of each other's hands. Huh? Something's fishy. You two weren't hatching some kind of scheme without me, were you? No, absolutely not. I was, uh, making sure Master was in good health before checking his pulse. I'm dumbfounded. Saber just told a bald-faced lie. <laughs> but why would Saber panic about this too? Yeah, you've got a weird way of checking someone's pulse. Tosaka regards Saber curiously. In response, Saber starts acting even more suspiciously. Probably because she's not used to lying. I need to help her, or this will get even more awkward. Hey, what do you want, Tosaka? Didn't you say you were getting something from your room? Oh yeah, here, Saber. Thank you. I thank you for your trouble, Ren. Tosaka hands Saber a bag. Saber looks surprisingly happy as she takes the bag. That's the last of it, so be careful. Force summoning or not, changing into your armor will shred your clothes to bits. I am sorry. It was so sudden that I did not think ahead. I appreciate you for bringing me some more of the same clothing. Yeah, it's a simple design, so it's like a uniform. Kirei keeps forcing such plain clothes on me. Not that I mind, since that outfit doesn't look very good on me. But why are you so fixated on this outfit, Saber? Well, Shiro mentioned that it looked good on me. I'm not following all this, but it seems Saber's third. It seems that Saber's third set of clothes. I don't have any women's clothes around the house, so Saber's been borrowing clothes from Tosaka. But yeah, I really appreciate if they had their girl talk when I'm not around. I am a guy. It had been such a nice conversation until now too. But I don't really know what to do with myself when they get talking about stuff like this. So not much happened afterward, and both Tosaka and Saber forced me to go sleep in my room. I may have regained consciousness, but I'm still severely injured. Ryder sliced on my arm so bad that under normal circumstances, I'd have had I'd have the I'd have had to worry about whether I'd be able to use them again. Plus, I fell three stories, so I'm all broken and bruised. There's plenty I should be thinking about, but the two have agreed that the best thing for me to do right now is sleep so I can heal. 
but I let Shinji get away. I'll need to settle things with him as quickly as possible. He didn't hesitate to activate the bounded field. Even I know how dangerous it'd be to let a master like that roam free. Damn. This isn't the time for me to be sleeping. Things go blank, like a dizzy spell sweeping over me. The only thing that feels normal is my head. As soon as I lay down, my half-healed body just forces me off to sleep. Tomorrow. When tomorrow comes. I don't have time to rest like this. Even if my body isn't fully healed, I need to find Shinji. Woo! Okay. Holy shit. Today I'm dropping Tsukihime. Today I'm recording this. So yesterday I dropped Tsukihime for y'all, from y'all's perspective, okay? And well, um, shit. That is, I haven't played a lot of visual novels, but for me, that chapter in Tsukihime that I played, that's coming out, um, that came out yesterday on, from y'all's perspective is the best visual novel chapter I've ever read ever. I haven't played that many visual novels. I played Danganronpa. I played, well, Danganronpa. I mean, I say before it was probably Danganronpa. Um, you know, Danganronpa and Course Power were in pretty good condition. I say probably, what was that one chapter of Course Party? Um, that Morishigi chapter of Book of Shadows. It was Morishigi's chapter of Book of Shadows. And chapter five or chapter four of Danganronpa 2. The one with um Nagito. Uh that that class that that not class trial, my fault. That chapter and the Morishigi chapter in Book of Shadows are two of my favorite visual novel chapters ever. The Tsukihime one just jumped up. And it's like, I genuinely, like, that's one of my favorites now, too. Um, This one is get up there, kind of. Because that shit was just so fucking awesome. This chapter was so fucking awesome to me, bro. But that that's literally, I, I said all of that just to say that. But that's all. Peace out. I hope, no, fuck. Why am I doing that? I still got some shit I want to check. <laughs> What's this? Fate skyscraper. But I wanted to ask really quickly, all right? What is this? Why is this a broken heart? I I just want somebody to tell me in the in the comment section. Why is this a broken heart? Does that mean that I've strayed off from her path or something like I was I was on her route or like I could have been doing her route but I ended up not doing it so I'm guessing basically this was my last opportunity to go down the Sakura route and get a different ending that's what I'm assuming this broken heart means because I guess this was my opportunity to start it but I missed it then they gave me a second opportunity to start it and I missed that too I'm guessing that's what that means. I'm not too sure. Let me know in the um comments. I'll definitely do I'll definitely um go back and check it out once I finish this route. You know, I'm getting all the endings after all. But let's check um stats. Noble Phantasm. Other seal blood temple. A bounded field of blood. It dissolves humans that get trapped inside. The dissolved humans become red blood. Absorbed by the Bounded Fields user. Its original use is to absorb magical energy. Okay. Oh, dude said, I don't know nothing about Berserker. So, I, get, I mean, Hercules. So, I'll, I'll read this up. I know a little bit about the original Hercules. You know, of course I know about the Disney. I don't, you know, that shit. That's not real, you know. I know a little bit about the original mythology shit. But, you know, I don't too much watch, you know. The greatest hero in Greek mythology. The demigod hero is a product of the chief deity Zeus and a human woman. Hercules. Oh, they actually have his name right. Hercules. But. 
It's Hercules, right? That's how you say it. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's how it Hercules. Hercules, because most people spell it H E R C, and I'm pretty sure it's originally Hera, like Hercules. There's a Greek god called Hera too, isn't there? Whatever. Hercules is skilled in every aspect, but there was a big problem with his personality. During his childhood, he beat his liar teacher with the, to death over a trivial matter, W. He then spent his days as a shepherd until adulthood, in order to re reform himself into a composed man. Hercules, who grew up to be a fine young man, accomplished many great deeds that caused the king of Thebes to grant his daughter, Megara, to him. They had two children, and he earned the right to succeed the king. Hercules was young and strong, and had already become an existence that no human could hope to defeat. It seemed as if he was, it seemed as if the rest of Hercules' life with his family was going to be smooth sailing. Zeus's wife Hera, yeah, I knew it, Hera, detested Hercules because he was a child of Zeus and a human, and influenced his fate at every opportunity. Hera instilled madness in Hercules, which made him go insane, and he ended up killing Megara and his two children. I remember that. Told about the sin he committed, he received an oracle he was to atone by becoming a slave for Eurystheus, the man who snatched the kingship that would have originally been his to claim. Eurystheus was jealous of the strong hero, Heracles, and gave him many difficult tasks, declaring that he would stay a slave until he, was, until he finished them. They were all labors that could not be achieved by regular humans. They became widely known as the 12 labors of Heracles. There were only 10 labors that the gods had imposed as punishments for Hercules' sins. But two more labors were added by Eurystheus because he did not approve of the fulfillment of two of them. But Hercules managed to complete even those tasks, and it may have been because he had been just been granted freedom. But he, but even he received an, but he even received an immortal body as proof of his great deeds. This marked the beginning of the legend of the greatest hero of Greece, Hercules who accomplished deeds equivalent to the Argo expedition in the Trojan War by himself. However, Hercules' life after that was filled with madness. Hera's hatred was endless, and Hercules, who was supposed to be immortal, was poisoned by one of his wives. The great hero who fought a competitive battle against the sun god as a human was slowly getting killed due to the goddess's persistent jealousy. While on the verge of his death, Hercules burned his own body, which was still afflicted with poison and entrusted himself to Zeus's, Zeus's judgment. The gods approved of Hercules' great deeds in the conference and prepared a seat for him in Olympus after his death, effectively deifying him. Hercules went mad many times in Greek mythology, but originally he was an excellent soldier who could use any weapon. Hercules actually possesses attributes that could allow him to be categorized as any of the regular servant classes, excluding Castor. The best noble phantasm that he owns was earned during the Twelve Labors, it is a bow and arrow called Nine Lives. Okay. That's hard. I fucks with that. But that's the end of the episode, man. If y'all enjoy, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read them all. Tap into the next one. Hope y'all are enjoying. Discord's in the description. If y'all want um if y'all want updates and y'all just want to communicate with your boy, you know? I'm a, I'm about to let bro, I'm about to, I'm about to what you call it, my Discord and shit. And my Discord, we got niggas talking and shit. Sometimes I be um sometimes I like to put clips of the video that I um find while editing. I like to put them in there. Um I like to I, I like to put pictures in there, you know, like stuff. I like to talk to y'all and shit, you know. Y'all get the first like literally, like y'all get first notice when the video drops. If I get enough people in here, like I might start doing little um like small little events and shit, like having some of y'all actually come into the like actually come into like a voice chat and voice act with me while I record these vi while I record these games like you know shit like that like I, I you know I just I just want my I just want a community bro like I just want to I, I want a community because I want to communicate hold on that's hard I want to communicate with y'all so tap into the discord and make yourself make yourself seen peace out I love you